Cranes allow heavy objects and supplies to be lifted to the tops of buildings, moved from one place to another, and over other structures. The sight of a crane is so commonplace in today's world that we seldom pay attention to them. Rigging is the most critical part of crane operations. As part of the lifting procedure, proper rigging of the lifted object is paramount. Rigging is the preparation of materials, supplies, equipment, or other items for lifting by the crane. Rigging involves making sure the type and capacity of the crane and the rigging equipment used is appropriate for the load being hoisted. Rigging also involves balancing and securing the load to be lifted. Improper rigging of a load or failure of the rigging equipment can result in property damage, personal injury, and even death. This program is designed to help employees understand about proper rigging and its potential danger and is designed to be a basic overview of rigging safety. Topics discussed in this program include pre-lift safety measures, hazards, rigging equipment, hitches and sling angle, rigging practices, lift and landing of load. Before beginning a lift, it is important for the crane operator, rigger, signal person, and other necessary employees to go over the specifics of the lift. This is the lift plan and is recommended for all lifts. Topics which should be discussed prior to beginning rigging include any hazards associated with the lift, including special precautions, the roles and responsibilities of each employee involved with the lift, specifically the crane operator, the rigger, and the signal person. The types of signals to be used must be agreed upon and understood by all. Hand signals are the most common method used. The signal chart must be posted on the job site. The route and final destination of the load should be determined. All hazards must be considered when determining the best route to use. Weight of the material being hoisted along with the total load points. Any lifting limitations of gear and hoisting devices, including crane capacity. The direction of the swing should be agreed upon. The disconnection process of the material being lifted once the lift is in place. There can be many life-threatening hazards to be aware of during the operation of a crane and the lift. Some of the possible hazards include power lines. When operating a crane or doing a lift near power lines, always assume they are energized. If during the operation of the lift, any part of the crane, load, or load line could get closer than 20 feet to a power line, safety precautions must be taken. OSHA standards provide detailed and systematic procedures to follow to prevent equipment from making contact with the power lines and protect workers in the event contact does occur. Consult Table A in 29 CFR 1926.1408 to determine minimum clearance distances based on voltage. In addition, if the line voltage is over 1,000 kilovolts, a registered engineer must determine appropriate distances. Another major hazard when working around cranes is being struck by, caught in between, or crushed by the crane's moving parts. A crane's rotating superstructure can injure a worker who enters areas in which the crane rotates. Employees can be struck by the crane or crushed between the crane superstructure and another part of the crane or another object. Control lines, warning lines, railings, or similar barriers must be erected to mark the boundaries of the hazard areas. Employees can also be struck or crushed by the load as it is being moved. Extreme caution should be used the entire time a lift is being made and employees should always stay clear of the load. 
Those workers using taglines must always stay clear of the load, even as the tagline is being used. All personnel working in the area of the crane operation must wear protective equipment and clothing. At minimum, each worker should wear a hard hat, appropriate gloves, high visibility safety vest, and steel-toed boots. OSHA requires all rigging equipment to have permanently affixed and legible identification markings indicating the recommended safe working load. If no identification markings are present, the equipment must not be used. There are many different types of slings available to use. Alloy steel chain, wire rope, metal mesh, natural and synthetic fiber rope, synthetic web, and synthetic round. Always consult with the manufacturer's guidelines to determine the sling best suited for the lift. Rigging equipment should never be loaded in excess of the recommended safe working load as prescribed on the identification markings by the manufacturer. Sling manufacturers provide charts specifying the load capacity, allowing you to determine what size and strength you need for the job. Overloading the rigging equipment could cause the crane hoist line to part or the rigging gear to fail, the crane to tip over, damage to and possible failure of the crane. When not in use, rigging equipment should be removed from the immediate work area so as not to present a hazard to employees. Just like using a proper knot in a rope, it is necessary to use the proper type of sling and hitch for a lift. The type of hitch used and the angle of the sling in relation to the load are very important aspects of rigging. Slings should be hitched in a manner providing control of the load to prevent sliding, slippage, and or loss of the load. There are three major types of hitches used, basket, choker, and vertical. The basket hitch is the most common type of hitch used, and it usually provides the largest workload limit. It is a simple hitch made by placing the sling around the load and attaching both ends to the hook. With a choker hitch, the sling is wrapped around the load once and then through the shackle on the other side. It is pulled tight and attached to the hook. The vertical hitch is used with loads having lifting attachments. One end of the sling is connected to the hook and the other directly to the load lifting attachment. This vertical hitch only has approximately 50% of the basket hitch workload capacity. The sling angle is the horizontal angle formed between the sling leg and the top of the load. The sling angle affects the working load limit. The smaller the angle, the less the sling can carry. Ideally, sling angles should be kept above 60 degrees. The sling angle should never be lower than 30 degrees unless recommended by the sling manufacturer or a qualified person. Before any lift begins, the load must be properly rigged by a qualified rigger. One of the most important things to do before rigging is to inspect the sling and all fastenings and attachments for damage or defects. Damaged or defective slings should immediately be removed from use. A few of the things to look for during an inspection include cuts and abrasions on nylon or fabric slings, kinks or broken wires or strands on wire rope, stretch links on chain slings, bent or cracked hooks. Hooks should not be stretched more than 15% in excess of normal throat opening or twisted more than 10 degrees. And lastly, the crane hook safety latch should automatically retract to the closed position upon release. Before placing a sling, you should always pad sharp edges on the load with material of sufficient strength to protect the sling. Slings should only be shortened or adjusted by methods approved by the sling manufacturer or a qualified person. Make sure slings are not constricted, bunched, or pinched by the load, hook, or any fitting. Never shorten or lengthen a sling by knotting or twisting.
Slings are only for vertical lifts. Never drag a load horizontally. Do not rest loads on the sling. If a sling is under a load, do not pull the sling out. Reset the load to remove the sling. Do not drag slings on the ground, the floor, or over abrasive surfaces. Do not allow shock loading. And always avoid twisting and kinking of a sling. A lift is successful only if it is completed without harm or injury to anyone or damage to anything. The following steps are important and recommended to ensure a successful and safe lift and landing of the load. First, determine the weight of the load, then determine the appropriate type of sling and the proper hitch to be used for the load. The load center of gravity should be directly below the hook. Before hitching the load, check the hook for problems. Make sure the safety latch is in place and working correctly. Hooks with self-closing latches or their equivalent must be used unless setting wood trusses in which J-hooks are permitted. Once the rigging is set, do a trial lift. Take load up about a foot. Confirm the sling can support the weight, the load is centered, and the crane can hold the weight with brake power only. Check for any load swinging or tipping. If the load seems out of balance, set it down and re-hitch it. Check for loose items such as screws and small tools, which could fall and strike workers below once load is lifted. Everyone should be clear of the lift area before the lift signal is given. Use hoisting routes which minimize exposure of employees to hoisted loads. Make sure your feet, hands and fingers are clear of any pinch points before telling the signal person to OK the lift. When lifting in tight areas, stay out of danger zones to avoid crush hazards. No person should ever be directly under a load. Only personnel authorized and essential to the operation are permitted in the fall zone, but never directly under the load. Keep the load close to the ground. If necessary, use a tagline to guide the load and minimize rotation. Never wrap tagline around your hand or body. Use a non-conductive line. Keep in mind, a wet rope can and will conduct electricity. Always consider weather and wind conditions before beginning the lift. Landing the load safely is the last step to the lift. To assure a safe landing, follow these steps. Be sure to stay out from under the load. Remove any unnecessary items from the landing area. If hit, they could fly up and strike someone. Keep feet clear. Watch for potential roll of the load. Don't get caught between the load and a wall or other machine or stack of material, as you could become trapped or crushed. Make sure load is stable and secure on the landing site before unhooking from the sling. Do not use the crane to pull the sling out from under the load. Once crane rigging is removed, return crane hook to upper limit switch. Working with crane rigging can be done safely each and every time. Follow your company's guidelines, the sling manufacturer load charts, and never overload the sling or the crane.